早く！バラ、俺は新聞記者だ。The 1960s saw the rise of Godzilla's reign as king of the box office, so it's no surprise that his rule was challenged by other studios hoping to cash in on the big G's success, and thus the Godzilla knockoffs were born. Out of these knockoffs, Gamera was the most successful, who managed to spawn his own franchise. But what made Gamera such a rival alpha to Godzilla? Let's find out. The plot is as generic as it gets. You have your cliche monsters, scientists, reporters, and military delivering tropes that are done by the numbers. The tension of the Cold War is teased at the beginning, but it's never taken advantage of. Neither does the film take a stance against nuclear weapons. The country carrying the atom bomb that unleashes Gamera is never named or held accountable. The bomb only serves as a plot device to release Gamera. The plot relies mainly on pseudoscience, boardroom meetings, and press conferences. Most of which offered nothing different, simply repeating the same exposition, the theme of nations uniting against a common threat, and the concept of a developed narrative, for that matter, are treated more like an afterthought. The characters don't fare any better. Doctor Hidaka and Doctor Murase's only purpose is to deliver exposition and concerned expressions when needed. Kiyoko does absolutely nothing. It's pretty clear she's the token female character, and because of this, her boredom clearly shows throughout the entire film. Ayagi is the only decent character that offers any form of amusement, but even then, Ayagi is not the most compelling character either. Ayagi shows a hint of interest in Kiyoko, but that idea is never explored upon. By far, the worst character in the film is Toshio. To say he is annoying is an understatement. Hands down, Toshio is one of the worst characters in cinema history. I am calling it. He puts himself and others at risks to see Gamera, moronically believing that his pet turtle grew into Gamera. The film tries hard to make Toshio the heart and soul of the movie, and even tries to evoke sympathy for him, but this fails miserably. Every single scene with this little bastard is infuriating. Sadly, the trope of annoying children would be something that plagues the rest of the show of Gamera films after Gamera vs. Barugon. Gamera is a charming kaiju. However, his characterization is inconsistent. The film can't decide whether he's good or bad. He goes out of his way to save Toshio's life, yet still attacks civilization and even purposely kills people in the process. Gamera's design is outlandish, but it works because of that. The suit is an impressive feat, given how uncomfortable it looks to be inside it. The one thing I can't defend about Gamera is his ability to fly. It's too ridiculous to take seriously in any form, but at least the spinning effects look great. Tadashi Yamanuchi's score for the film is surprisingly good. The tone of the movie heavily relies on Yamanuchi's brooding music that succeeds in highlighting the wrath and terror of Gamera. The Tokusatsu special effects are marvelous. While the effects don't have the same grandeur as Eiji Tsuburaya's work, they do come pretty damn close. The detailed effort that went into the miniatures, model work, and Gamera suits are a wonder to behold. While there are some good composite shots, there's also some bad ones that are distractingly obvious. You can also see the rim of the flamethrower in Gamera's mouth. The film is only 78 minutes long, but it drags at times. 10 minutes could have easily been cut to fasten the pacing. Noriaki Yuasa does a better directing job than the directors of other Godzilla knockoffs like Gappa, Yungari, and The X from Outer Space. Still, that's not saying much. There are no signs of a prodigy in the making, but rather a director who's trying to hold things together and keep his job by playing it brutally safe. Overall, Gamera the Giant Monster is not one of the best Gamera titles, nor is it one of the best films that the genre has to offer. But it is an entertaining creature feature nonetheless. Gamera the Giant Monster is a reminder of why these films are fun and charming to begin with. While the bland plot and characters won't win anyone over, the awe-inspiring special effects and the charismatic titular monster definitely will. While the film is nothing special, the original Gamera film is an important part of kaiju cinema. Without this film, we probably would have never gotten the excellent Heisei trilogy or the highly enjoyable Gamera the Brave. The original Gamera film was the only title in the franchise to be given a theatrical release in America. But just like the original Godzilla film. Gamera underwent some alterations. 
It was released as Gamera the Invincible, randomly adding the extra M to Gamera's name and extra footage with American actors. But this is a separate film I'll review for another day. I award Gamera the Giant Monster 2 stars out of 4.